Hi there, and welcome to this short tutorial on how to import transactions into Thomson Reuters Accounting CS. My name is Christopher Reagan. I'm going to take you through um, a couple of different things today. It is a very simple process, I will say that. And uh, while I can suggest some improvements for Accounting CS in the future, and I'm going to mention them to you when we get over to Accounting CS, hoping that they see it, um, for the most part, I think that the way that they have set this up in the way that Ledger Sync allows you to move these transactions into Accounting CS saves you a ton of time. So first I've started us off here in Ledger Sync and the reason is I want to show you exactly how to pull the file that you'll need to import. So what I've done is I've pulled up Ledger Sync and I have selected a client, I've selected a checking account, I've selected a date range and all I have to do is come over here to export and you're for accounting CS and Sage users you're going to use the OFX export so I click on this I save this file wherever I want to be able to grab it I have saved it already to my um, downloads folder and now I can get out of ledger sync and get into accounting CS so I am not a accounting CS expert by any means, but I do know my way around the software. And this is a sample client that we put together to illustrate exactly how this works. I've got a couple of different checking accounts inside this, um, this sample file so that I can show you what to do whenever you have no transactions in uh, a bank account for a month. And uh, also what it looks like if uh, you have clients entering information into their bank and you're going in to reconcile the bank accounts and check on anything that is missing. So I'm going to go through both scenarios. And the, the main thing you're going to want to do after you've got that OFX file is you're going to come right here to reconcile bank. Once I'm here, I am already on this tab but normally you're probably going to end up starting on this tab you can see above I've got two different test bank accounts set up and you've got a series of tabs down here the main tab that you're going to use to do all of this is this bank statement import and I'm on test bank account uh, one basically which is the bank account that has no transactions I know that because right here under unmatched bank account transactions there's nothing in here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse this interface right here. I'm going to browse for that OFX file that I downloaded from Ledger Sync. So let me let me browse for that. Here it is in my downloads. When I bring this in, now you can see down here things have changed. And what this is going to allow me to do is expand these rows and you have these shaded out transactions and what it has is it has the dates over here already entered for you it has the amounts it has the descriptions the way that uh, accounting CS wants you to post these to um, the bank account is by clicking this adjustments button and here's one of the ways that I'm going to suggest that accounting CS change this process here a little bit there needs to be a button where if I'm doing something like this, I can just select all of them because I cannot enter the GL account until I've selected this adjustment. Watch, watch what happens when I, when I've unclicked this, I now can't click in here at all. And that's because the system doesn't think you want to make this adjustment to the bank until you've clicked this. So I'm not going to do all of these. I'm going to do a few of them. You can see right here, you can start typing in. Um, these are, um, deposits here and so I can start coding them to 4,000 if I want to in this particular account that's an income account I can code them to something else if I like you see the the chart of accounts is right here and I can do whatever I want to I can search through here and, and book them any way I want go to other income whatever you're used to you can also put references in uh, to the system but to, to do that I think you have to um, you have to kind of go in a different way through the bank account so in most cases you're just going to post right here to the GL 
and whenever you're ready to post these, you can just come right over here to post adjustments. So I'm going to unclick these and just kind of quickly show you what this does. I'm going to go to post adjustments. Now you can see those adjustments have disappeared, the two that I posted. And then over here on this next tab, under deposits additions, I've got them in there. Now there's several transactions in here that we've already done, but uh, both of those transactions that we just did are right in here at, at the bottom of the screen. So they're, they're in the account now. You can do the same thing if I come back to bank statement import and I want to scroll back up to the top. And that would kind of be another suggestion for accounting CS is to make this screen just a little bit bigger or set up in a different way to where I can look at everything at once. But here are my debits here too. And I can expand these. And I do the same process. I can click on adjustment. I can click the GL account that I want. If I want 6200. And I can post that adjustment. Now as you can see, by importing using the OFX that LedgerSync creates, all I really have to do is use the descriptions to post all of this information to the GL. And it cuts down dramatically on the time. And it instead of having to enter all of this information in that inner transaction screen, which isn't the fastest screen uh, of that I've ever seen, this saves you quite a bit of time. And it's very, very easy. You can see it's very, very fast. The other account I wanted to show you was this test two, and I'm going to click over on it. Now, if I wanted to, to abandon this reconciliation, or if I wanted to, uh, if I figured out that this was the wrong OFX or something like that, I can come over here into manage files and get rid of it and clear, clear out this data, but I'm not going to worry about that now because that was the right file. I'm going to come over here to test bank or to desk bank account two. Uh, no. Now here you can see that I have some transactions that have been put in here. I've got some checks that were cut and I have some other transactions here that uh, are deposits. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to browse for, let's say this was a second checking account. I would have downloaded a second OFX file and I'm going to browse for that file. And here it is. Now I want you to pay special attention to what happens to these transactions whenever I open this. Did you see that? Did you see some of them disappear? That's because what the system has done is it knew that some of those transactions were in that bank account and it's matched them for you. And if you come over to checks and payments, you can see this one was matched right here, this check marked. And if I go to the deposits, you can see that these two were matched. And the reason I, I did several of them is I wanted to show that the ones that did not match stay right here so that you can see as you're going through your debits and credits down here, you can start matching things up and saying, okay, why is this different than what the bank has it clearing for, that kind of thing. And on here, what's happened See how that 7933 is right here? Let me highlight it. See this transaction right here, 7933? It's right here. But notice how the check number is 100, and on here the check number is uh, 5457. So it's saying I'm not going to match that. But if I want to uncheck this, and I'll check over here, and I want to check right here, I can tell the system now to match these two. And they both go away. Here's another one, 3280, 3280, the check numbers were different. So I'm gonna match these guys up. What I'm left with then is transactions that are not in uh, the bank account. So when you're doing reconciliations, importing is much faster than going through the bank statement trying to hand uh, tick and tie where each of these things is because you can easily start matching things up first and then you're just left with what's not in the system and you can enter it 
Again, come over here, entering adjustments, enter your GL codes, post them, finish later or finalize it whenever you're totally done. So that is a very brief look at how to import the LedgerSync OFX file into Accounting CS and get your work done much faster. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at LedgerSync. Have a great day and happy importing.